good morning everyone uh, today we are going to discuss uh, advanced supply chain planning um, ACP plan options uh, feel free to add your comments uh, and let us know your feedback uh, now we are going to look at the system uh, a quick uh, look at the release uh, we are on uh, vision database on uh, 12 to 5 Oracle 12 to 5 release okay now uh, let's go into the advanced supply chain planner responsibility names so this is where we define uh, ACP plan options at what point we come into plan options it completely depends on uh, project to project and uh, based on the requirements so basically in any implementations you know business uh, requirements gathering gap analysis and uh, solution design all of the normal phases right in the solution design when we look at a uh, client mm, so the supply chain network and then we come up with uh, how many plans does this client need to fulfill the supply chain uh, needs or requirements right so some clients uh, may have uh, one acp plan and some may have multiple ACP plans let's see how to define that so go into ACP um, plan names so this is a completely vision data so if you are using vision uh, so you will see the same thing uh, I'm, I'm taking one of the ACP plan names here so as soon as you look at here plan type there are three types manufacturing plan production plan and master plan so uh, every uh, whatever uh, plan type you change here it uh, it it gives you a different uh, supply chain strategy strategy right so let's uh, let's talk about the first one first in line master plan right now i'm referring to acp user guide one to one acp ug dot pdf so here I'm on page number 141 here uh, if you see the first in line is MPP MPS and MRP right so at in which scenario we use MPP MPS MRP so MPP is a master plan master plan is basically it's a DRP where you want to uh, define all the items in DCs as a MPP that means you are going to run a MPP plan so how does the system know if it is MPP or MPS or MRP, right? So just by changing the type here, it will not work, right? There is a, a linked setup for this type, plan type. So the setup is in item master. So if you see, go into items, the master items, select M1. now if you go into MPSMRP planning the plan method if the plan method is MPP planned right that goes into MP uh, master plan if it is MPS plan it goes into production plan and MRP manufacturing plan and these are the combinations we'll, we'll talk about these two later in a different scenario where right now we are looking at MPP MPS MRP now if you go back here the document so MPP we take MPP all finished goods define them with MPP in DCs right and then run the ACP plan MPP ACP plan now MPP ACP plan looks at all the distribution requirements with uh, uh, on hand uh, supply it, it collects a supply right all of the supplies available in the distribution network and each of DCs basically and then basically I'm taking a big assumption that the forecast is loaded on the DCs right? now when we run MPP plan we get a supply plan for, for all distribution networks right now if you go into the system in plan options So if you are defining a plan master plan 
those items those orgs in those orgs where you want it to be a, a master plan you have to define them as mpp plan now when you run this plan and assign orgs in the plan options so that will only go into a cp plan will only pick those items which are defined as mpp items and to the planning process so mpp plan will only pick the mpp items from the plan output and you get a plan output and then what right now some scenario some clients may have a scenario okay the first option the first priority for the, for the company the supply chain strategy is okay fulfill all the dcs at any cost i don't care what are all the constraints involved in fulfilling the dcs in such a strategy so we, we we run dc plan uh, distribution plan and feed it into a mps plan now mps plan is constrained by whatever uh, uh, capacity whatever right so but uh, it obviously the input is coming from the distribution the plan output so this is my demand now you go fulfill it now, how are we going to define the MP MPS plan? Is that a demand constraint or capacity constraint? Is a different topic again. So, what is is your is your organization demand driven or a capacity driven? So, basically, in this scenario, when if you are constraining the distribution orgs, uh, I mean feeding the forecast into distribution orgs, and then constraining the uh, production plan, right? So, basically, we are going by demand demand driven plan output now when we run mps plan so let's say in this case we are assuming that we are using a demand constraint plan right so mps plan is defined oops sorry uh, mps plan is uh, uh, defined right uh, uh, all the items are defined in uh, mps plan output in the item master they are they are defined as mps mps items plan planning method is mps right so let me quickly check go into the system and uh, show, show one more time we go and look at uh, item master we have a network issue going on so i'll just keep talking on this uh, based on this slide and uh, we'll go into the plan options in a detail mode in the next session right now when we look at the mps plan uh, production plan right so the item is defined as mps in the item item master and mps uh, plan type here and when we run the plan we get a plan output so that plan output will be given to all production schedulers or master schedulers or you know give it to the shop shop floor so and uh, mp uh, most of the times MPS is uh, basically you know some some clients go for demand driven and some clients go for capacity driven and the, the, this is this process is called a bench book model and uh, the next step is how do I plan for raw material raw material is again uh, defined as a MRP planned in the item master and here is a manufacturing plan now these are three different types of um, item attribute types and three different plan types and each works in a different scenario works in a different scenario so this is the uh, for a small client uh, it's a simple process to use just every item in a manufacturing plan run the plan and look at the output so that's that's basically a uh, a simple simple planning method so planning process but for a few clients uh, it's also recommended Okay, look at the, your finished goods and then look at your uh, raw material right so there are many constraints I uh, lead time constraints or supply capacity or you know uh, sequence dependent setups there are many constraints in each planning uh, plan output and uh, the next one we will immediately look into the MRP planning method right? most of the times uh, people use uh, a a simple constraint a lead time constraint with no other constraint so that makes a, a, a simple uh, you know 
a quick uh, implementation as well as a simple one for users to understand and follow basically or, or a, uh, another process which we already talked about is a useful method planning method manufacturing and um, and look at the plan so in the next session we are going to define three different scenarios we take one plan for MPP feed that into MPS and then feed that into MRP so we will do preview that scenario with the, our own different items and also another scenario what we look at is we define all of the items in one planning method from the plan output uh, run the plan and see the plan output and we can compare side by side so that it gives a good picture of what is seven, which one is a good good plan output what is the optimum uh, how good am i in fulfilling the supply chain uh, needs basically requirements so in a sense that oh, if i'm getting a a hundred million forecast for six months or one year right uh, so I'm, I'm talking about fast moving fmcg uh, units 100 million forecast right so how is my um, supply chain fulfilling that demand right so we'll look into that in the next session and uh, obviously sorry uh, we will compare both the outputs and see which one is a good output so so that uh, it's easy for to recommend to the clients even at any in any implementations we're not just going to simply enable one output and see this is the best output for you no because we need to look at all other options of how do i give a best plan output for uh, with the minimal uh, uh, with the maximum demand fill rates Sometimes, if you, if you see, if you choose a strategy where, if you are, you, you may be fulfilling only 50% of the demand, and uh, when you look at your capacity, is everything capacity is fully available, right? So we need to look at uh, those kind of scenarios. So that means uh, the best ideal scenario is I should be fulfilling my demand 85, 90% or 95% uh, most of the times. Or sometimes 100% also if, if you have a very good uh, supply chain planning process SOP process so then you may be fulfilling at least by 90-95% right? or some clients may close to 98-99% so except uh, if you take out the demand spikes the sales order spikes uh, if you don't take that into consideration because we are not uh, at this point we are not looking at uh, forecast accuracy we are not reviewing those things here but at least by 90 percent is a good deal uh, to, to have a good very good supply chain so so if you look at the real-time business process uh, people will be master schedulers uh, plan managers and everyone will be looking at the fill rates how fast am i fulfilling the demand so those are the things will be monitored manually outside the system but also we will give a, a pointer from the system this is how it looks like please uh, keep go, keep improving it right so those are the pointers reports we publish from ASAP also so uh, the next session will be mostly on uh, further going into a deep dive into the plan options and we will review all of them with uh, running uh, multiple plans right and we'll catch up in the next session thank you